Be very careful. Be very careful. The one fourth, very good. The y, negative one half times two, not adding, times. Negative one half times two is negative one. So you're not going to get one fourth y, you're going to get one over four y. Do you see it? Or you can do y to the negative one over four, but you're going to change that. So one fourth, I'll say y to the negative one, just to follow the steps down. What that becomes is 2 pi, 1 to 4, square root of y, square root of 1 plus 1 over 4y, dy. Take a look at it, see if you can follow it down. It's a lot of algebra with those negative exponents. I know they can catch you sometimes. Why don't you need to swim over it down? You'll see. You'll see. Just a second. You okay with it so far? So this, square root, one four, square root, negative one, y to the negative one, denominator. You okay with all of it? Okay, now, I'm about to do some fancy math. Fancy pants math. There's a few ways to do this. Uh, I will be showing you one way. Maybe I'll show you both ways. We got some time. Maybe I'll show you both ways. Here's fancy math way, and then I'll show you non-fancy math way. Either way works just fine, okay? So two options. Fancy math. You ready to see fancy math? Here's fancy math. Fancy math way says, take the two back in there. But call it the square root of four. One to four. Oh, shoot, I'm on the last row still. Good catch. Here's fancy math. Take the 2 back inside, but call it the square root of 4. You okay with that so far? Is it still 2? Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I know that the square root of 4 and the square root of y can be multiplied together to give me a square root of 4y. Why did I pick 4? Why? Well, look at that. I have a square root times a square root. And what I know about that is that I can multiply square roots times square roots. And the radicands that's inside of square roots can multiply together. So if I do this, hopefully you can see this. 1 to 4. Big square root. Look at 4y. And what's going to happen here? 4y times 1 gives you 4y. 4y times 1 over 4y gives you 1. Done. Practically. Anyway. Practically done. That's a fancy way to do it. Take the number inside of there, call it, make it up, make it a, instead of 2, square root of 4. See if it simplifies something. In this case, it did. That was kind of a nice, easy way to do it. Were you able to follow it? Let's say you didn't see it, because chances are you probably, oh my gosh, I, I wouldn't be able to see that on my own. Can you do it differently? Yeah, I believe so. We're distributing right here. 4y times 1 plus 4y times 1 over 4y. The 4y's are going to simplify out. Okay, so this was like, I'll call this... Here's star 2. So from this point. If you don't do what I just did, what you end up with is square root of y, 1 plus 4y, well, I'll, I'll rewrite it, 1 plus 1 over 4y, dy. What you have to do is what we've done similarly. I just showed you a nice step that didn't require you to do this, but you can do it in a way that I think hopefully should be familiar to you. Find a common denominator here, over here, 4y over 4y plus 1 over 4y.
like that. Find that common denominator. You got me still? Put the fractions together. You remember doing this? It's very similar to something we've done before where we had to break up that square root by a quotient. Can we do that now? Have I lost you? Are you with it? Do you see what we've done so far? Found a common denominator, put the fractions together. That way we can separate them. So 2 pi still. Square root of y times square root of 4y plus 1. There's nothing you can do with the square root of 4y plus 1 right now. Nothing. You can't split that up. However, this is the square root of 4y on the denominator as well. Now, when you think about the square root of 4y, what that is, is 2 square root y. See how to get the 2 square root y? They see we're going to get the same thing. It's kind of cool. Either way you do it, this has a few more steps. I mean, really, this is like three steps, five steps. But you're going to get the same thing. You know, whatever way seems easier, I don't care. But I just gave you another option over here. This is kind of the fancy pants type of math. Ooh, I want to be fancy. Do the fancy. If you don't want to be fancy and you get this, do this. I, I really don't care as long as you get the right answer. Tell me what happens here, please. Twos are gone. Yeah. Constant, constant. Very good. What else? That helps you a lot, doesn't it? Because if you don't get rid of that square root of y somehow, you're smoked. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to look for some substitution, and that's just not going to happen with this example. So now we're left with pi 1 to 4, square root of 4y plus 1, dy. Now, will a substitution even work? What's the derivative of 4y plus 1? 4. Does it have a y in it? Then of course it will work. You always neglect constants with your substitutions. Constants don't matter. Because you're just going to pull them out front anyway, right? So will a substitution work here? Yes. Absolutely. What's the derivative of 4y plus 1? It's 4. There's nothing that you need to simplify out. You're going to pull the 1 fourth out of your integral anyway. So let's do that here. u equals 4y plus 1. You generally pick the thing that's inside your problem. And right now our problem is the square root. Don't forget that you do need a substitution, though. You absolutely must. du equals 4 dy. du over 4 equals dy. What else do you want to do right now? Let's do that. I'm sorry, when u is 4, you get how much? And u is 1, sure, 5. So those right there, those are our new bounds of integration. We're not going to have to substitute back in for x's later. We have these in terms of u. We're good to go. So let's rewrite our integral real quick before we do it. We'll have a pi. We'll have this integral from 1 to, I'm sorry, 5 to 17. Because we just changed bounds square root of u du over 4. Don't forget that the dy becomes a du over 4. So 4y plus 1, u. 17 from the 4 when we plugged it in. 5 from the 1 after we plugged it in. du over 4, that's equivalent to dy. So we have the appropriate integral right now. Uh, quick head on if you're okay getting that far with the calculus. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Are you ready to do the integral? Yeah, it basically fits our integration table. Maybe I'll write it one little different way here. Pull that 4 out in front. We have pi over 4, so pi over 4, u to the 1 half, going from 5 to 17. Basic integral.
And we all know the integral of u to the one half is u to the three halves over three halves. That is pi over 4 times 2u to 3 halves over 3. And hey, we got to simplify <coughs> that, plug in some numbers, we'll be good to go. So 2 with the 4, we're going to get pi over 6, u to the 3 halves, oh, we're going from 5 to 17, Now we're going to plug in 17 to the 3 halves power. 17 to the 3 halves power? That's yes, right. In fact, some books, some books leave it just like that. Because they're like, seriously, you're going to go any further than that? You know, what are you going to do? Well, it doesn't really matter. If you can make it down that far, I know you know what you're doing, okay? Um, the, these numbers generally are not very nice. You're dealing with a length, right? Which is why you get the weird 17 root 17 thing and the 5 root. Remember those from the, the length of the curve? You get a lot of those. You get those a lot with that. So with this, you're going to get those a lot as well. You're just multiplying by uh, circumference right now, length times circumference, basically. So you get a lot of this. So leave it like that or go one step further. By the way, do you know why 17 to the 3 halves power gives you 17 root 17? Yeah, it's a square root of okay, because so you have 17 squared times 17, square root of 17 squared is 17, but you can't take out the next one, so you have 17 root 17. That's the answer. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with what we talked about so far today? All right. Well, are there any questions? I hope you enjoyed calculus.